Hello, and welcome to another edition of the RPG Book Report. With me, your host, Logician Tim. We have a brand new book to look at tonight. Well, it's not brand new. It's been out for a while, but it's new to me. So, uh, so well, yeah, welcome. It's it's gonna be gonna be pretty awesome. We're gonna give um, some of our first impressions to the Pendragon RPG. And if you clicked on the on the video or you, you saw the the banner, of course, then you know what it is. So, uh, before we get started, do me a favor and just like the stream. That does help out so much. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I noticed today that I think only ten percent of my viewers uh, are subscribed to my channel. So it's free. Just click the button, subscribe. I only stream like twice, maybe three times a week. So I'm not going to flood you with, you know, spam stuff or anything like that. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. It does help out a lot. Uh, finally, shoot me a comment below. Uh, I'm usually pretty quick to, to, you know, about responding to those. Uh, and just those three things, just liking, subscribing, and giving comments. It helps the channel grow a whole lot. Uh, and they're all free to do. Now, if you do want to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. The link is in the description. Or... You can just buy me a cup of coffee instead. It's kind of a one-time thing. There's no like sign up or reoccurring subscription or anything like that to worry up, worry about. It's just a one-time thing. You buy a guy a cup of coffee, support the channel. It's easy as that. The link is is in the um, description below as well. And it's called KO-FI, but it's pronounced coffee. So yeah, buy me a cup of coffee. Anyways, business out of the way. Let's get on to Pendragon. All right, here we go. Now the Pendragon Classic was released. Way back, and let me get back here. Uh, da da da. Uh, Jesse Durney, what's up, my dude? Fancy patron now too. Yeah, man, I've been I've been trying to work on it. I'm still tweaking stuff a little bit. Patreon will get up there. Chris Kirby, pancakes. What's up, dude? How you doing? So, uh, so yeah, we are. Um, we're looking at this pan this pancakes, and see now you got it on my head, Chris. What's up, dude? Uh, we're looking at this Pendragon Classic, and like I said, it was released back in 19. 85. It was written by Greg Stafford, and there have been five different editions released from several different companies ever since then. We're going to be looking at the 5.2 edition today, uh, which is sold through Chaosium. Now, full disclosure, Chaosium did send me this book. It was a while back. They did send me a, this book at no charge for me to do a series on it. Uh, and this will in no way change my opinion or comments you know, I make about it. Just that I'll let you know beforehand, just full disclosure, right? Okay, so let's check out this book. First off, where can we get it? Let me uh, pull up the webpage here. They do have a drive through RPG has it on their site for 20 bucks. The link for, uh, for that is down in the description. If you click my link, um, then you can find it there. If you want a hardcover, uh, you can find it only, well, I can only find it on the Chaosium website. And that link is in the description below as well. And it's $39.99 for the 5.2 hardcover rule book. So there you go. Uh, let me give switch back here. There we go. Nope, wrong one. <laughs> there we go. All right. So let's take a look at it real quick. Is there anything else I want to tell you about it? Um, uh, yeah, the hardcover, like I said, the only, only way I could find it is on Chaosium's website. So don't even bother checking Amazon. I couldn't find it there at all. There was like a spot for it, but it was out of stock and didn't look like it's been around for a while on there. So I don't know. Um, let's take a look at the book now, shall we? So real quick, just like about every other book that I've covered here on this channel, I know pretty much nothing about it before I before I start. Like, I don't read anything about it. I don't watch any videos on it or, you know, read any of the reviews or anything. So I'm learning everything from the book itself. And I, and I read the chapter and I do a stream. And I read another chapter and I do a stream. And so you're getting all these kind of first thoughts from me. And then at the end, I'll kind of do a kind of a wrap up stream at the very end. So you kind of, I can put it all together for you. But um, yeah, I don't really know anything about Pendragon. Um, it is 264 pages long and it's definitely a full size, uh, full size book. It's not like a half size. It's a full size book. Um, what I did notice though, kind of on the back, and I'm going to kind of read this uh, first paragraph to you just cause I thought it was really cool. It says relive the grandeur romance and adventure of the greatest of all legends. The story of King Arthur assume the role of knight starting his career in the time of Uther Pen Pendragon undertaking quests and perilous adventures for your lord, for your lady love, for the church, 
or for your own glory. Win great renown with your laudable deeds and feats of arms, or perhaps even winning the right to carve your name into the round table itself as the story of Arthur and Camelot unfolds around you. All right. Well, I had no clue what Pendragon was about. That right there just told me, holy crap, this is like Knights of Roundtable stuff. I've heard of that. I don't know much about it, but yeah, I've heard of that. I can't wait to, to kind of dig in this thing, right? So I saw that. And I was like, oh, that, that's pretty darn exciting. Then I see, oh, wait, let me flip over here real quick. Then I see, um, I start flipping through the book and actually real quick, let me tell you this. The, the first rule of being like an, an eternal learner like myself is being proud of your ignorance and just kind of letting your curiosity teach you things, right? So like you get curious about something, then you learn it and you can kind of be proud that you're ignorant because I have stuff to learn and I know that. Uh, and I have to admit that I know very little about King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, uh, which is the world in which Pen, uh, Pendragon appears to take place in. So it's going to be a really cool introduction for me. And uh, that's so, like I read that one paragraph. I was like, oh, sweet. I'm going to learn about, you know, King Arthur. Yes. And Knights of the Round Table. I've heard a little bit kind of what you hear just in passing or like TV shows or something, but not much at all. Now, like I said, flipping to the book, there's several several you know charts and tables. Uh, there's some really nice maps in the back somewhere. No, they're very back, maybe. Yeah, some very nice maps in there. There's some nice nice art throughout. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is. I'm still trying to lose my voice. There's some nice art throughout. It looks to be mostly. I think it's all hand drawn. To be honest, it looks kind of old school. A lot of black and white. It looks like um, like. Um, pencil and ink, a lot of it. There's some color stuff too, but it looks almost like hand-painted stuff. So I don't know if this is all hand-painted or somebody with a computer did this and made it look hand-drawn, uh, or if it's like really old school stuff that I should know about and I don't. Like here's one of the full color pieces. Very, very nice. Now the paper is, paper quality is, um, is absolutely perfect for me reading. So you'll notice like a little bit of sheen over here on this full color page to kind of give it that pop. But on the reading pages, you, the sheen's not there. And so you get the beautiful sheen page right here when you have full color art. And then on the reading pages, you don't have that high sheen. And it makes it so much better and easier for me to read with all that your fighting glare all the time. So uh, really cool stuff. Um, it's very well organized. I like the headers like they have at the top of each chapter. They kind of tell you which chapter you're in. Like this is role playing uh, nobles and other titles. Let me get one where there's one on both sides here. So you see what I'm talking about. So over here, I'll say chapter six combat. That's the name of it, of the chapter. And this will tell you where in the chapter you are. And this one's talking about injury, health, and wounds. And I like headers on pages that tell you kind of what, what chapter you're in and what's uh, where you are inside that chapter. Uh, because it just helps. It helps you know, finding stuff quickly. When you're flipping the book, you're like, I know it was in chapter six, but where was it? And you just kind of quickly look up there and it's a small thing and it just goes a long way for me personally. So, so far, um, I'm, I'm digging like the art and the layout. It looks like I said, very well organized and looks like it's going to be, it's a lot, but it's going to be a lot of fun to read, I think. So, um, let's go back and start at the beginning now. All right. Uh, Travis, let me catch up with you real quick. Uh, Uther was an evil, evil man. He says, if you can, if you can check out Excalibur, it's an 80s movie, kind of dated, but covers legend. Okay, cool. I will check that out. Um, they had a thing about, oh, what happened to my, my uh, autofocus? Like, look at my book. Dude, come on. Focus. Focus. All the joys, right? Let me see if I can get this, uh, this thing happier. Maybe. Nope. We'll get it. I'm trying. There we go. We got it. Yeah, we just, we just got to mess with it, right? Oh, I did see something you're talking about. Look, my face cam stopped working. We can get this working again. Let's see. Yes, we got it. All right. <laughs> fun, fun stuff when, um, you know, technology, we're live streaming. Stuff's going to go wrong. Just deal with it. I am. All right. So you were talking about Uther being an evil, evil man. I did read something in here and I didn't put it in 
my notes, but it talks about Pendragon is a title that roughly corresponds to Warlord, uh, which who was originally Arthur's uncle. And he first held it when he re regained his uh, patrimony from the usurper, somebody, I can't pronounce his name, who was a tyrant, all right? So after his uncle died, so his uncle was a good guy, after he died, his brother Uther became uh, came to hold the title of Pendragon. And so I thought that was kind of cool until he uh, Uther eventually fathers Arthur. So Uther Pendragon is King Arthur's dad, uh, who will hold it next. Uh, Arthur's going to hold it next, and after whom none will hold it ever again. Thus the title becomes, in effect, a family name. So I thought that was cool. Gives does give us a little bit of a background about what Pendragon is. So anyways, all right, back on topic, guys. We're going to begin at the beginning of the book. And the first thing I notice here is this like super, super nice um, table of contents, right? It's broken down by chapter, of course, like all table of contents are. But under each chapter, there are kind of like keywords with, you know, the page numbers next to them. And sort of like, you know, like a miniature appendix, right? And I can't tell you how nice this is when a book has this. I'm always looking for something particular and I can't remember what chapter it's in. And this allows me to do that very, very quickly. So I can just go, oh yeah, what, what was this about? Okay, here's Battle Rounds. Okay, it's 116, bam, right there. And I can find it very, very quickly. And I just love it when they do that. So I just want to throw that in there. Now we're going to look at the introduction. Um, and this is where we're going to spend uh, the rest of our time on today's stream is on the introduction. And so we see some of this nice uh, hand-drawn looking art here. Um, and then kind of the intro starts and they start off telling us, you know, kind of what the game is about and uh, who we are going to play. And they tell us that uh, Pendragon is the game of of King Arthur and we will be playing one of the knights in the realm. So right off the bat. All right. King Arthur time. We're going to be playing a knight. All right. I got that in my head. Like first little paragraph. And we will start off kind of like a nobody. You're not really a nobody if you're a knight, though, but you do have some. You know, privilege as being a knight, but you're going to start off kind of being a nobody knight. And then through, they say your action, your intelligence and luck, we will all have a chance at a seat at the round table. So we got to do a good job. Now they say, as time goes on, our knight, our player, our character can establish a famous family and even participate in the, they say the incredible events of King Arthur's time, which I will be reading up on and learning what more of those are as we go. Now, the game they tell us is of medieval fantasy and our knight that we will be that we will be playing. I'll get it out. We'll have both the privileges of like this elite society, along with the deadly responsibilities that come along with, you know, kind of being a knight because you're going to have to fight stuff. Right. That's what knights do. So, yeah, you're like high society, but you're going to have to scrap and you're going to do some deadly stuff and, and fend off beast and, and bad people and whatnot. So that's just going to happen. So they say that, I like this quote, they say, it is this dichotomy of brutal reality versus idealism, It's because you have to like brutally kill people, and but you have this idyllic way of life, and then the elite privilege versus this deadly burden that are the basis for Pendragon. And that just sounds like super cool to me, this this awesome dichotomy that's always pulling you on either side of this, this moral and physical, you know, survival. It's just really awesome. So... Now, they say Pendragon is not just about the life of, you know, one night, like your night. It's instead the game begins like in the Dark Ages and ends in what they call the War of the Roses just before the Renaissance. So later on. Right now, ideally, you will actually create a family and pass along your belongings and your knowledge to your heirs. So when your character dies of, you know, either violence or some weird accident or maybe even old age, your game doesn't stop there. You would then kind of pick up as one of the heirs, like your son or your grandson, something like that, uh, to your previous character and continue on, you know, albeit with you know, different statistics and everything because they're not going to have the same exact stuff as grandpa, right, or dad. Uh, they'll have some of the same stuff. They'll have all the same belongings, but they won't have the same skills and abilities necessarily. Now, as time goes by in game, uh, this is what I thought was kind of cool. Things change. Like new development developments in armor, weapons, castles, you know, customs change, transportation, your, your horses, you know, kind of change over time. And they all change um, and it keeps the game developing as you play because it starts off in the middle of the, 
the um, Dark Ages, and then it kind of finishes it up right before the Renaissance. So a lot of technological advances and changes in culture happens between those times, and you get to see that kind of play out. I think that's really interesting. Now, they do tell us about, uh, they said this game is for knights, and you know it's not about magicians or thieves or scholars, but that doesn't mean that there's not magic. Now, the introduction does tell us about this fairy realm with, they call it their dark woods and their bright shining fields, which are unexplored by humans. So there's apparently this like fairy realm out there and people, not very many people know about it or at least explore it. They say that there's, um, that these fairy cities and castles kind of appear and vanish like mist. Then they said the residents, one resident, his name is the Green Knight. They often visit the world of mortal men. And conversely, men will sometimes enter the fairy realm to seek out great adventures. So, yeah, there is magic around. And I'm kind of curious to see how much access, you know, to magic a knight will have, you know, will get, if any. I don't know. I'm kind of interested in that. I like playing magic users myself. But I'm sure this is probably a lot more melee focused, I would assume. And we'll see how much magic a knight would have access to, or maybe they're just fighting against magical things sometimes. So uh, Travis says, uh, that's a cool way to keep your play going well after you hit max level. Yes, because you're, you're, and we'll get into this more when we get into the statistics stuff, but I did read in the introduction, it, it described a little bit about as you get older, your skill may be going up in say sword fighting but your strength is gradually going down because you're getting older and older and more and more feeble, right? And so uh, your stats are going to be moving, you know, in conjunction. So you can't, you can hit a peak level, but there's no max level because you're going to start to grow old. And so uh, I think that sounds really awesome. So you, your stats will change and all of a sudden, bam, you're going to have a new character. Their strength may be very high, but their skills might be a lot lower. So it's constantly going to be changing around that. I think that sounds really cool. So yeah, that, so there was the fairies. Um, what else do I want to tell you guys? All right, so playing King Arthur Pendragon, the next part of this, the introduction kind of goes into some basic role-playing stuff, all right? Like total newbie role-playing stuff. You know, like how to pretend to be a character and so forth. And I won't go with, through it here, but I just wanted to say that I love it. Absolutely love it when they put this type of stuff in books. Just about every RPG has the possibility of being someone's first RPG, right? Every book out there has a possibility of being someone's first book that they pick up and putting stuff in there just for that, those newbie people is a really nice touch. Um, you know, I like it when the author assumes that I know nothing about, you know, about the game or I know nothing about RPGs in general, because you know, that's not far from the truth. But, you know, I really enjoy it that if I was on a desert island and I picked up this game you know, somehow it washed on shore. I could actually read. I knew nothing about RPGs. I could read this book and have a good sense of what an RPG would be like. And I love it when they add that kind of stuff in there. Definitely. John Hoover. Hey, buddy, what's going on, my dude? Good to see you over there on Facebook. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Now, um, let's switch over here to the next page. All right. So the intro kind of explains that the object of the game is to acquire what they call glory. And you, you get glory through combat. They say chivalrous behavior, religious behavior, uh, familial obligations that are fulfilled, uh, possessions, you know, getting, you know, possessing things and getting rich, uh, you'll achieve glory, and also like your social position as you climb up the ladder of the elite. Now, like I said earlier, uh, so that's your, one of your main goals is to gain this glory. The other goal is to build and raise a family. And like I said earlier, that way, when your character dies or retires, somebody else is going to be there to take over and give your, you know, give you a new character to play uh, to keep on going. And because of this, your reputation is very important. You know, certain behaviors are going to earn you more glory than others. And the players are going to be judged on these 13 paired traits. And this is something we're going to be going over later in stream because I don't even know what they are at this point. But we will be going over these 13 paired traits later on this, in the stream uh, or in the, the streams, later streams. Uh, there's things such as passions that we'll, we'll be covering later on as well. Um, and these passions will help you play your character better and even give you some bonuses from which I understand. Just know that there are metrics uh, that you should do your best to follow, at least, in order to earn the most glory and build your legacy. Okay, so there's some some kind of guidelines that you want to try to place, 
play close to if you want to earn the most glory that you can and, um, you know, kind of following those passions and building that family and everything all at the same time. Now, as I alluded to earlier, Pendragon moves quickly through time. So it's not like this, you're going to live this 30 years and that's it or whatever it is. No, your, your game is going to span, you know, probably, you know, at least two or more, three, four, five, six lifetimes, right? Because uh, the characters are probably going to die fairly young. It's it's a brutal era, right? It's it, A lot of people didn't have a long life. People didn't live to be 90 or 80, right? Typically. Um, so, um, yeah, Pendragon moves really quickly through time. And the ultimate objective is to go through almost 90 game years, which is like the entirety of King Arthur's life. So your first character might be, you know, about, you know, he might hear about King Arthur's, you know, conception or when he pulled the sword from the stone and might live on to kind of join him in some of the battles. More likely what's going to happen is that your first character is going to die and you're going to have an heir to pass on your knowledge and your possessions to, and they or their heirs are going to be going on the next adventure. So you're going to be kind of step stepping through with new characters, but continuing progressing forward through time, which I think is absolutely awesome. It tells us that 15 years of game time is approximately 100 years of real world medieval history. Okay, so 15 years in game is 100 years of medieval history. So the campaign will go through all of the uh, Arthurian story and pretty much the entirety of the Middle Ages. Now, I haven't quite wrapped my head around this time thing, like how this is going to work 15 game years equaling 100 medieval years. And I'm kind of hoping that the book is going to go further into that later on with some more detail. I'm sure they will. Like, how does the GM know to, you know, hey, it's been a week now or it's been a year now, right? I'm assuming that they'll go over some of the time stuff later on in the GM chapters or maybe even before that. We'll see. But it's kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around right now. I'm sure there'll be probably be more. Now, that being said, I think it is really cool idea to kind of play your character and it dies and you know, your son or grandson, somebody, somebody like that gets their stuff and their and sort of some of their knowledge maybe and kind of keeps on going while kind of time and life within that world, uh, all that stuff kind of around you is still progressing, you know, with like these new armors and weapons and all that kind of stuff. It just seems like it'd be like really bring that world to life. Like, yes, I my life is small, but the journey continues on through other people. I think that sounds really awesome to me. So uh, in the introduction, they do go on to tell us about um, the different cultures and regions kind of tell stories of King Arthur differently. And they give kind of a brief explanation from some of the cultures because it, you know, it's the kind of the title of this section is which Arthur is this, you know, which Arthur are they talking about in this book? And they kind of go on and just saying, Hey, what well, kind of depends on where you're from, you know, cause different cultures kind of saw and wrote about Arthur in different ways. And they gave a few examples, like the English see Arthur as, you know, a personal hero, you know, personally heroic, you know, has chivalrous honor and like this refreshing simplicity about him. But the French, on the other hand, often portray King Arthur as an inefficient and un uninspiring. And uh, Sir Lancelot was apparently the most favored knight, not Sir, you know, not King Arthur. Um, the Welsh, you know, kind of saw him as more of a, you know, like more of a supernatural type light. Um, and they go on to give some more examples, but I just wanted to point out that it seems kind of, it seems very important to the authors of this book that we get a firm grasp of not only the history of the time, but also the in interpretations of that history through the lens of these different cultures. There seems to be a lot of text in the book that is dedicated to teaching about cultures and people and you know the, the periods. And I think it's awesome because learning more about the world that you're going to be playing in only brings that world to life even more and kind of, um, you know, bringing you into that world and making, making that, that world real to you and making your game experience you know, that much more enjoyable in, in my opinion. So yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of reading on those periods and times and those people and places but I think that's kind of needed, especially when we're so removed from the medieval ages, right? We're so removed from that, that we can't really relate to it. So I think unless you, you've you done a lot of reading on it, I think this is going to be very helpful for me to read and get a good good feel of how things are. Now, um, they do go on to kind of tell us some more about the book itself. They give us kind of a rundown of what type of information we're going to find in each chapter. 
Um, and I absolutely love it when books do this. They kind of give a synopsis of the chapter right there in the introduction. So they'll tell me, hey, chapter one is covering this and chapter two is covering this. And it's just one little paragraph about what it is. Uh, but with these types of kind of chapter synopsis, I can, you know, I can quickly look and say, yeah, they talk more about family stuff and, you know, fatherland stuff later on because I'll be looking and, and I'm wondering, well, are they going to talk more about time later on? And I can read here and go, oh, wait, yeah, they do. You know, if it's one of the big things, yeah, they do. They cover it in chapter eight or whatever, right? And so I really like it when they put these type of chapter synopsis right there in there for us. Um, now they do go on, go on to get a little bit into die rolling. Um, they go into kind of what dice you will need and how to interpret, you know, formulas in the book and actual dice rolls like, you know, uh, a D, you know, X D six or, you know, D six plus two, something like that. And they kind of break it down again from a newbie perspective. If you've never played any RPGs, they break down that for you. And uh, it's really simple. And I like it that they do it again. If I was stranded on a, on a desert Island, this washed up on shore, I could learn how to play, you know, an RPG and not have any access to any outside person. And I love it when they do that. Um, now you will need, let's see, Da, da, da. They, yeah, you will need basically just two types of dice. You'll need a D6 or you'll need D6s and D20 dice. Okay, so six sided, six sided die and 20 sided die and you're ready to go. And I would say a handful of each, you know, say five or so uh, of the six sided die and maybe more. I'll have to look as I go further. You know, a handful of, of each would be handy. Now, um, Page 12, they kind of they kind of wrap things up in the introduction, kind of giving us some pronunciation guidelines on like, you know, are you saying Celtic? Well, no, Celtics, as they tell us, and you know, quite humorously, Celtics are a basketball team. You know, these are Celtics, right? And to kind of tell you the difference between a C and a K sound when you're talking about, you know, Celtics or Celtics, right? Uh, or a Celt, C-E-L-T is a Celt. Um and then there's a Celt, right? A Celt is a member of an ancient culture. A Celt is a stone knife without a handle. So there you go. So they kind of give you some of that stuff. And I think it's cool that they do that for us. They give us some measurements here, you know, um, kind of conversion tables. They give us some, some common terms and abbreviations, all great stuff. So you can tell, you know, what is a lady? Well, you know, here's somebody get called a lady in the book. A lady is the wife of a nobleman of any rank. And so there you go. You know, know now that somebody's a lady, they're the wife of a nobleman. So, you know, watch your P's and Q's or whatever. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I really like the introduction. Kind of, uh, it wrapped me up pretty quickly, right? I found the writing to be informative and interesting. They told me enough about the world, my character's place in the world, and what my objectives are to, to really get me interested in reading further, which is a huge point, right? To me, an RPG needs to get my attention early, uh, like way early, like in the introduction. I mean, ain't nobody got time to be reading three quarters of a book, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. You know, just give me something. It only took a few paragraphs. There you go. Um, you know, what is the world like? Who am I in this world? What are my objectives? I mean, and it's surprising how many books fall short on catching the attention of the reader by answering those questions early in the book. And I'm so glad that they did it here and they did a fantastic job of it. So yeah, that's about it for uh, for the introduction. Next time we're going to be discussing the Pendragon Realm, and according to the chapter synopsis, which I love, it's going to tell us more of kind of the what and why of the game. It'll cover information about the lands and the people of Britain, and will give us some facts about the medieval times, uh, which they say, and I agree, uh, that is very helpful for the players to understand those medieval times before you begin playing. Uh, they said that medieval, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, medieval, med, medieval customs, I'll get out, medieval customs are very different from those of our modern life. And so you might kind of best want to read up on them before you get, offend somebody in the game and get your character's head chopped off like in the first five minutes. So it's kind of good that we do that. Okay, that's about it for me tonight. Do me a favor and like the stream. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Like I said, only about 10% of my viewers are subscribed. I appreciate it. It's free to do. Shoot me a comment down below. I'm usually quick about reading and responding to those. Those three things, likes, comments, and subscribes, helps the channel grow a lot. Now, if you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. The link is in the description below, or you can buy me a cup of coffee instead. Like I said, it's a one-time thing. There's no sign up. There's no recurring charges or anything like that. You buy a guy a cup of coffee, you support the channel. 
And uh, the link for that is in the description below again. And it's K-O slash F-I, where they pronounce it coffee. That's it for me tonight, folks. I will see you all in the next one, probably on Wednesday with some more Pendragon. Y'all have a good one. Bye.